give up the race card. Yeah, that's right. Quit calling people racists. Seriously. Leftists, we have an open panel in a Q&A session because we want an open idea. Oh, I'm a racist. There you go. That's a new one. Where'd you learn that one in Social Human Studies 101? <laughs> right next to the... Right next to the giant, I don't know, wild boar I couldn't see who said, there's no such thing as fat chips! Uh, guess what? If you think there aren't, you are one, okay? You're conflating Donald Trump supporters with historical Democrat rope-wearing white supremacists? You wonder why white people are attracted to the GOP? It's not because the GOP is racist. It is because you blame all of your problems on white men. Discussion. I want to call you assholes. By believing these ideas, you're inherently disrespectful of oh, people so, of color, so you don't, of women, oh, really? of gay people, oh, really? of people with depression. How, is, how, how, no how, are we, how are we inherently disrespectful to those people? Because your policies hurt us, and you're white assholes, white bros, Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry that I'm white, and that automatically means I'm so white guys not allowed to have it. You blame everything on white men. And when you're white, and you have this whole political movement blaming you for everything, you're gonna tend to go the other way. You're pushing rational thinking people to side with racists. Also, supporting border control is not racist. Supporting border control is nationalist. Yes, let's be honest, racists do support border control. But you so-called liberals, for some reason, think that racism is the only motive behind supporting border control. Because if that is the case, then Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are racist for two reasons. A, they both have supported fencing of the border. Between Donald Trump's immigrant bashing Republican party and the kinder, gentler Democrats. Instead of fighting over who would deport more people or speak less Spanish, Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders vowed to intervene even personally to help poor undocumented immigrants. Ma'am, I will do everything that I can to unite your family. Your children deserve to be with their mother. And I will absolutely protect your children, yourself, and try to bring your family back together. Get out, get out. But are immigration politics really as simple as good guys versus bad guys? Evil Donald Trump wants to build a wall. Benevolent Hillary Clinton voted for building a wall. Where it was necessary, we did support some fencing. Nasty Ted Cruz thinks immigrants compete unfairly against Americans driving down wages. Sweet Bernie Sanders, at least until very recently, thinks the same damn thing. I don't know why we need millions of people to be coming into this country as guest workers who will work for lower wages. It's an unpleasant but perennial truth. Politicians politicize things. They play on people's fears. And they reverse themselves, usually without shame. Ten years ago, Hillary Clinton said, I am, you know, adamantly against illegal immigration. B. They are pandering to racial minorities. Therefore, they are exploiting Mexicans, blacks, just to get their vote to gain power. Did you like B? No. Did you think it was insane? Well, that's how everyone else who isn't you feels when you call Donald Trump supporters racist. You guys have also twisted the word racism to fit your narrative. Never mind, that is a topic for another video. Also, you have ruined the strength behind the word racism. Go ahead, actually. I take everything back. Go ahead and call us racists. I personally don't give a shit anymore. Brooke of the Ayn Rand Institute doesn't mean I share any or all of their beliefs. And that's exactly the same as when I talk to left-leaning guests like Jimmy Dore or Reva Martin or my guest this week, John Fugelsang. I listen to people, push back when I see fit, and see where the conversation goes. I know some of you want me to electrocute my guests every time they say something I disagree with, but there's a litany of legal reasons we just can't do that. But beyond the legal reasons, I'm a firm believer that good ideas always beat out bad ideas if you let the light shine on both of them. It's not liberal or even decent to shout down or silence ideas just because you don't like them. That has been and always will be the driving force behind the Rubin Report. Unfortunately, many liberals have taken a turn into stifling dissent with cries of racism and bigotry every time they hear an idea that they don't like. 
To me, being liberal is a constant evolution of ideas as time goes on. This concept doesn't mean changing my ideals or my morals from day to day, but it means that I can change as the world changes. I see the world in shades of gray rather than black and white. The world is constantly changing, and I'm not ashamed to admit that my opinions have changed along with it. That isn't the position. Oh, I am racist? Cool, I know. Did you know that Hillary Clinton's economic policies are either implausible or harmful? Did you know Hillary Clinton rigged the primaries against Bernie Sanders? Did you know Hillary's social policies aren't her real original stances, and she in fact flip-flopped on them? You notice how I did that? You call me racist? Cool. I'm going to critique your candidate about positions she has and that you have. I don't like the economic policies her and you have. Want to know why I went straight to policies and beliefs? Because I don't need to attack your character right off the bat to win an argument. I don't need to call you a name to make myself morally superior. I don't need to virtue signal to others to make whoever is listening take my side. Hell no. I will challenge your ideas. Oh yeah, you are not a liberal. I would like my word back.